Module 3, Objective 10, explain the role of calcium as it relates to the skeletal system, including the hormones associated with calcium homeostasis. The skeleton is basically a large calcium reserve. In fact, theorists have suggested that bone evolved as a means of storing calcium because calcium is so important for various facets of, of physiology. Our bones store uh, roughly 99% of the body's calcium, in addition to, to other things as well, um, such as phosphate. Calcium is the most abundant mineral in the body. Um, and again, we, I've already mentioned calcium ions are vital to many physiological processes, such as muscle contraction. Calcium ion concentrations in body fluids have to be closely regulated. Blood calcium levels have to be maintained between 8.5 and roughly uh, 10 milligrams per deciliter. <clears throat> what enables the body to maintain calcium within this very narrow range are a pair of hormones. Parathyroid hormone and calcitonin are the two antagonistic hormones that are used. And by antagonism, I mean that one of these hormones will increase calcium, while the other will decrease, so they're antagonists to one another. These two hormones affect the storage of calcium, which is maintained by the bones, the absorption of calcium within the digestive tract, as well as the excretion of calcium in the kidneys. Parathyroid hormone, or PTH, is produced by the parathyroid glands located within the neck. They're going to, or PTH rather, increases blood calcium levels by stimulating osteoclastic activity. So as osteoclasts are stimulated, remember clasts are the, um, the bone cell that dissolves matrix. And as bone matrix is being dissolved, calcium is liberated and that's going to increase blood calcium ion levels. In addition to that, PTH increases the intestinal absorption of calcium. They enhance calcitriol secretion by the kidneys. And then lastly, PTH decreases calcium loss or excretion uh, by the kidneys. Calcitonin, on the other hand, decreases blood calcium levels. They inhibit osteoclasts. This is going to slow the uh, osteoclasts from dissolving the matrix. They increase calcium excretion um, at the kidneys, as well as reducing calcitriol secretion by the kidneys. And then lastly, they decrease the absorption of calcium across the digestive lining within the intestines. These figures come from your textbook and they're very uh, similar to the verbiage that we just read on the past two slides but for those who like pictures sometimes this is easier to follow um, and the way we read this is we start up here with a low blood calcium concentration below 8.5 milligrams per deciliters and as our blood calcium levels drop the parathyroid glands respond by releasing PTH. PTH is going to travel through the body and at the bones it's going to stimulate osteoclasts to release calcium. So the osteoclasts will start dissolving the bone, releasing the calcium into the blood and that's going to raise blood calcium levels. At the intestines it's going to increase the absorption of calcium across the digestive lining. So as we eat calcium-rich foods as it moves through the intestines, uh, that calcium could be absorbed, thus increasing blood calcium levels. Lastly, at the kidneys, we see that PTH is going to help absorb the calcium levels. So um, it's going to help absorb calcium levels. And that's going to uh, decrease the amount of ca calcium that is lost in urine. 
and all three of those is going to raise blood calcium levels. And once we breach that uh, roughly 8.5 milligrams per deciliters, all of this shuts down. And remember, that is negative feedback. So that is the activity of uh, PTH. Calcitonin uh, is diagramized in a, in a similar fashion. Once calcium levels get too high, above 11 milligrams per deciliter, the thyroid gland responds with the release of calcitonin. Calcitonin are released by cells that are called C cells, <coughs> excuse me, within uh, the thyroid gland. So the C cell population will release calcitonin when blood calcium levels exceed the normal um, homeostatic range of, a, of around 11. Calcitonin will then enter the blood. It's going to travel to bone. It's going to decrease osteoclast activity, um, which will um, slow the release of bone. It's going to um, decrease the amount of calcium being absorbed across the digestive lining, so it's going to stop some of the absorption of calcium via the intestines. You'll simply pass that uh, with a uh, bowel movement. And then in the kidneys, um, we see that kidneys are going to excrete calcium ions, so calcium will be lost via urine. All of that is aimed at uh, decreasing the amount of blood calcium levels, and once blood calcium levels decreases below the, the homeostatic range um, of about 11 milligrams per deciliter on the upper side. All of this shuts down again, that is negative feedback. 